Hi, everybody. Welcome to Coach's Playbook with Paul Lapolis, your home for elite CFL breakdown analysis. Sean Bain Jr., oh my God, three touchdowns on only five catches, 125 yards, uh, two explosive pass plays, plays over 30 yards. Just an amazing first game for him. I think him and Trevor Harris are going to be a nightmare for defenses this season. I broke down the three touchdowns, so uh, let's take a look at those. Before I go, let's make sure you hit subscribe, please, and turn on notifications for the channel. let us know you like what you're watching. We've got 300 followers, but I'll tell you what, a lot of people are watching but not following or not subscribing. So make sure you subscribe, right? I'm talking to you over there in Trifons out there in Regina or, yeah, make sure you subscribe. Or the Copper Kettle, yeah, I see you over there, buddy. You're not, you're watching, but you're not subscribing. Make sure you subscribe. If you look at this, it's a bunch of people watching, not subscribing. So, okay, let's open the playbook on Sean Bain Jr.'s touchdowns. Sean Bain with the hat trick. Three touchdowns versus the Elks last week. This first one, wide open, a lot of space. I'll show you the live uh, coach's copy, and then we'll go back and kind of break down what they did schematically to get so wide open. All right, where the free safety plays tells me what they're doing coverage-wise. So he's a high player. He's a high player. He's going to – he's low, but he's going to sink based on whether these two players go deep, and he's going to do the same thing. If two players go deep, he's going to – Go deep, but he starts out as a low player. There's one secondary player left, the free safety right here. So what is he doing? He is what's called, I call a poach player. So he is committed to the three receiver side for one reason, because teams to the three receiver side run a lot of that. So they're, they're saying, hey, we're going to cancel out any digs that come from the three receiver side. Could be from number three. But a lot of times teams do it how I just drew it up previously. So he is now uh, basically going to be looking for an underneath route. Now, if this receiver went deep and that receiver went deep, he's going to stay vertical. So he's reading the route of number three to decide what's happening. If number three goes vertical, he stays vertical with him. Otherwise, he's looking for underneath breaking routes. All right, that's what I call two poach. So the hard part of this for the Elks is that puts the two players to the boundary are half field players. So anybody pushing like Saskatchewan does, widening that player, and he comes under and then up to the middle, technically he should stay inside that and then the corner should take the outside one. But what's very nice that the Riders did is they ran it like an under so it doesn't, it's harder for the halfback to see. So when you see it full speed, you can see what happens. He goes under and then vertical and the halfback has moved out of the way and he can't give up that open space. He's got to pass that to the corner and hopefully stay inside of that. It's a difficult coverage for what I call a middle play. Uh, let's see it from this sideline angle. You can see it from here. So... Basically, the only way this can be handled is as he's he should be passing that route off to that player. And when this one comes in and goes up, he's inside position on it. So the hard part of this is how the riders ran under and then up the field. So you can see it there one more time. So they run under and then up, halfback over committed. He should be inside it. Free safety's trying to adjust and help out but he, as you can see here he's committed to the other side so good execution on the first play sean bain's second touchdown here deep play action max protection only a three-man route but the crosser gets behind the defense let's go ahead and take a look at what that should look like here's the routes i got drawn up and let's see as we go back that's what you're getting from a route concept so Basically, this is uh, you're trying to play a game on the free safety because you have one player going across the field on a diagonal, and then you have one on a deep crosser. So if the safety goes to the diagonal you, or stays deep on this diagonal, you can throw the crossing route. And if the safety uh, tries to stay low on the crosser, you can take the diagonal. Now, this free safety is right here. 
for Edmonton. He is in the line of scrimmage trying to stop the run. Everybody else appears to be in man coverage. So they're chasing in man. Okay. He's man to man. He's man to man. He's starting to chase in man, but the angle is so far away, he actually ends up switching. And now the free safety is going to try to get that. That's difficult to happen, uh, trying to get underneath this. He's trying to chase it. He's just too far away and he gets leverage. So the play action pass helped. But certainly having the free safety so low, he can't make a play on the deep crosser is what hurt. And good recognition by Trevor. Great pocket by Trevor. You see from the end zone. You know, you only have four receivers out in this uh, concept, and they just have a really nice pocket for him when he – good action fake. He steps inside, climbs the pocket, easy touchdown. Excellent job. Last touchdown of the night to complete the hat trick for Sean Bain Jr. Uh, runs by the corner. Uh, difficult position for the corner to be in uh, when – uh, this is, I believe, Lewis that they run by because they were in what is called a blitz coverage. Let's go ahead and break down and show you what that was. Um, this is what you call cover zero. And cover zero is, I'll draw it right as we get closer here. All right. When we label coverages, we tell you how many deep people are, how many deep helpers there are in zone. So, if there was one deep, there'd be one player back here. Two deep, there'd be two. Three deep, there'd be three. So there is. this is cover zero because let me count them up. One, two, three on the three eligibles. Four, five on the two eligibles to the boundary. So there's five players in coverage. There's still seven players left on the field. So the seven players on the field are going to rush the quarterback or blitz. Uh, there's five offensive linemen and a running back. That's six. So that leaves one that cannot be handled. And that is what a quarterback has to beat with his throw. So basically, Sean Bain had a go route. Trevor knew it was a go route. And Trevor changes his drop and throws it downfield. The defensive backs know the ball has to come out quickly because... The free rusher is going to get there very fast. So that's why they stand at this spot right here. This is called level zero, where they're all on one level and they're waiting for the ball to come out and then they drive it because they expect it to be thrown to a short breaking route. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the boundary player, there's a go route by Sean Bain and Trevor changes his drop and just throws it early enough that the pass rush can't get home and the pass rush a little late. And that's what happens on this play. So he's played the live. That's why the corner's sitting. He's expecting the ball to come out quicker than it does. So that's the easy touchdown here versus zero. Let's go to the end zone and understand how you pick it up. All right. If you watch the center, 51, he just pointed, pointed over to this side of the field. He's telling a, the line which way to go. Hey, we're going to come over here. And we'll get it closer to a look, and then we'll draw it up. So here's how they picked it up. So the line goes one, two. The center pointed to this linebacker. He said, okay, I've got this linebacker. This guard will take, sorry, this one right here. And this tackle will take that one. And now there's two left, and there's a running back. The running back has to take the first threat of these two players. Because you always take the innermost threat because you want to make it the longest distance to get to the quarterback. So you always in pass protection, when you have to take two people, you take innermost and that forces this player around the edge. And that gave Trevor just enough time to be able to get the ball out of his hands. So you'd like him to be a little sooner. He could be standing right at the line of scrimmage and he comes a little bit wide. The best thing he could do is 41 dives in and he's standing at the line of scrimmage and he cuts this edge off to give less time. But they give him too much time. Trevor recognizes it, throws it up for the third touchdown of the game for Sean Bain. Really 
really impressive young football player, Sean Bain Jr. So really good stuff by Sean Bain Jr. and Trevor Harris.